CBS News Miami. And we begin now with some breaking news. Princess Catherine of Wales has revealed that she has been diagnosed with cancer. Princess Kate said she is in the early stages of treatment and is undergoing preventative chemotherapy. This comes after the princess underwent surgery in January for what doctors believed was a non-cancerous abdominal condition. Further testing after the operation revealed the presence of an unspecified form of cancer. She said the news came as a, quote, huge shock, and she and her husband, Prince William, needed time to process it for the sake of their young family. We'll have much more on this story coming up at 5 p.m. And now more breaking news, this time out of Moscow, where at least 40 people were killed and more than 100 were injured after armed attackers opened fire inside of a concert venue. A large plume of black smoke was seen billowing from a burning building as the chaos unfolded. No word yet on if the alleged gunmen have been caught. We'll have much more on this for you as well as soon as we learn more details. We move now to a next weather alert, and we're taking a live look at the next weather radar where the rain just keeps on coming down. A flood watch continues as the storms continue to pound parts of South Florida. Good afternoon and thank you for joining us. I'm Jim Barry. Here in South Florida, the wet weather already putting a damper on several South Florida events on tap for this weekend. Next weather, Chief Meteorologist Ivan Cabrera joining us now with more. And Ivan, will this weekend be a total washout? Not a complete washout, Jim, but I think the beginning of it certainly uh, underway now. In fact, we're just in the beginning of what will be a three rounder here and we're about to end the first one and it was a doozy here with torrential rain, flood advisories and even a tornado warning which has thankfully six expired across Isla Morada. This is the last batch that I'm watching here as it continues pushing off to the north and east. Just a few leftover showers and some pretty heavy rainfall just north of Key Largo there and that will continue heading off to the north and east. For a few more minutes this flood advisory will stay in effect for Broward County. Then conditions here have improved certainly since we've had uh, uh, not much heavy rain since that flood advisory was issued. But here's the issue. Here's the problem. I don't want you to get uh, too optimistic here. The sun is coming out and it's coming out big time with this huge lull here that's going to happen for about three hours. In fact, I've been watching this over the last uh, several hours here and look at it moving just right on top of us. I think that's only going to make things worse. It's going to destabilize the atmosphere even more. We'll get sunshine out. Temperatures will spike up and that'll set us up for the second round of three that's coming in tonight, I think after seven o'clock. So this is what we'll be in once we get the sun out and once we get that nice break and then back over in the Gulf, we still have more to get through here. There's this whole batch of heavy rainfall that is just headed down towards South Florida and into the Straits. I think the Keys generally getting the worst of it here, but uh, Southern Miami Dade certainly in on it as well as Broward. It's just the heaviest rain will occur. I think um, points to the south here. There is rain tracker doing its best to depict what is happening, and this is by eight o'clock. Now this is a very aggressive uh, run of this model here. If this verifies, if this happens, this could bring in a good line. Of a very uh, significant wind through the metro here right around 9, 10 o'clock. So hopefully this won't materialize just as we see it there because that's an indication of some very strong winds coming in along, of course, with the heavy rainfall, which is why we have the flood watch that remains in effect through tonight and into a tomorrow. An additional two to four inches. So totals, I think, will be anywhere from three to as much as half a foot of rainfall, if not more, in some of the areas where the thunderstorms are going to train over. Still have the wind advisory. This is more of a nuisance thing and certainly Certainly, marine conditions are terrible. Suddenly winds 20 to 25. The highest I've seen is around 40 miles an hour, so the gusts will continue. But it's the gusts that are associated with the thunderstorms that I'm more concerned about, not the general wind field that is on top of us right now. So that goes underway as we head to through it tonight and into tomorrow. I'll break it down for you this way. Round one is about to end. The sun comes out and then we get ready for round two after seven o'clock. That's going to be with us, I think, through about midnight. We'll catch a break overnight and then the final round comes in as we head into the early part of tomorrow through midday. So another next alert for the potential of heavy rain. There's still the possibility of some severe storms early on and then diminishing rain chances and improving conditions by Saturday night. Sunday still looks fantastic. Sunny skies with temperatures near 80 and that stretch continues through early next week. OK, Ivan, thank you very much. If you are waiting for the weather to clear up to attend the Miami-Dade County Youth Fair, you will need to make other plans. Earlier today on Instagram, the fair announced that it would be shutting down for the day. The bad weather obviously forcing this decision just two days after the fair opened. If the weather lets up, the fairgrounds are expected to reopen tomorrow at noon. Our coverage moves now to CBS News Miami's Morgan Reiner. She is in downtown Miami, where thousands are expected this weekend for Ultra Music Festival 
Rain or shine. The rain is here, but the festival goers I spoke to said bring it on. As long as the music is playing, they will be there to listen to it. The show must go on and and I'm with it, you know, I'm, I'm with the vibes. In town from San Antonio just for Ultra Music Festival, Frankie Lamone said the storm won't rain on his parade. I don't see that stopping me. I mean, got a tank top on and, and have good music and vibes. As long as everyone's safe too, the music, musicians, uh, the equipment, I guess. Whatever, if they, they want to go, I'm with it. At least he doesn't have to worry about the traffic. 10, 12 minute walk, that's it. A Miami native, Carmen Barrio says rain is in her DNA. Because Miami parties with rain or without it, so we're going to have fun. She's been preparing her whole life for this moment. I'm most excited to see Martin Garrix. That's like my favorite DJ in the world. I've been literally listening to him since I was like four years old, so. Roberto Ramirez. The rain would just make it better. Not better, but we'll make it work with the rain. <laughs> <laughs> In 2023, Ultra had 163,000 attendees. Other big events happening, a heat game right next to Bayfront Park at Caseya Center. And just a little further north on Biscayne, Hamilton is performing at the Adrian R Center. While both of those events are indoors, all three events happening within blocks of each other with an incoming storm will likely make it difficult to go to and from. At Hard Rock Stadium, the Miami Open is going on right now, too. Those tennis matches are played on outdoor courts, and the rain will most likely impact the matches and attendance. Last year, the tournament had record attendance at Hard Rock, welcoming over 386,000 guests across the two-week tournament. The Miami Open tweeted that there have already been some rain delays this morning. If you are planning on coming to any of the other events in the downtown corridor, just drive carefully, take the extra precautions because it has not been fun to navigate this area. In downtown Miami, Morgan Reiner, CBS News, Miami. Thanks, Morgan. Moving now to Miami Beach as spring breakers continue to make their way here. The city is doubling down on its restrictions. This weekend, visitors heading to South Beach will pass through a license plate reader on the eastbound lanes at the MacArthur and Julia Tuttle Causeways. Beach entrances on Ocean Drive will not be limited to 5, 10, and 12 streets. And liquor stores in the Entertainment District will close at 8 p.m. There will also be more police on and off the beaches. Now to an update on a story we brought you on our CBS News Miami Quickcast yesterday. A police officer is recovering after investigators say he was shot confronting an armed suspect yesterday morning in Fort Lauderdale. That officer has been released from the hospital and is expected to be okay. This happened at the Holiday Inn Express on 17th Street. The suspect is identified as Carl Chalinski of Margate. Police say he called 911 saying he had killed someone inside of a hotel room. When officers arrived, shots were fired. Chudlinski was killed. Officers say no one else was inside of that room. I was out here. People were telling me that there was an active shooter inside. One of the staff members, there's a lot of people in there. She was like, everybody get into this conference room, get into this conference room. Police say the suspect had prior run-ins with the law. Now to a wild story out of Tampa, where police are looking for someone who stole an ambulance and took off into the night. Authorities say the ambulance driver saw a man who appeared to be involved in a crash. That's when the ambulance driver approached the suspect, who then threw himself inside the ambulance and stole it. The suspect took off, later crashing and then running off. Anyone that could lead to information to an arrest is urged to call police there. When we come back, we have the latest on the crisis in Haiti and how Florida is stepping up big amid the crisis on the island nation. And now to the latest on the Israel-Hamas war. And Secretary of State Antony Blinken is headed back to the United States after what he calls candid conversations with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. Netanyahu says Israel will move forward even without U.S. support. More than a million displaced Palestinians are sheltered in Rafah. In five days of fighting, Israeli Defense Forces have killed more than 140 fighters and arrested 650 more. Now to the crisis in Haiti and the state of Florida is planning to charter even more flights to get people out of the country amid violent gang attacks. A U.S. government chartered helicopter here braves dangerous conditions, flying citizens stuck in Port-au-Prince to the neighboring Dominican Republic. Nearly 1,600 passport holders have registered for help, but only about 30 a day can be rescued this way as long as it is safe. 
Armed gangs have launched new attacks in the suburbs of Port-au-Prince as Haitians have been waiting for help from the National Police Force. They have been understaffed and outnumbered by gangs. Passengers arriving at Miami International Airport on a flight from Haiti are saying they are relieved to be able to escape the problems and violence in that country. They have to, they, they have, they have to control the government. They, they hate in the good government now to fix the country. And a spokesman from Miami International Airport said that he did not know of any other flights that would be arriving this week from Haiti. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis has signed a package of bills to address critical health care gaps in the state. Among the measures signed into law, a wide-ranging $717 million bill, which clears the way for foreign-trained physicians to practice in Florida. It also moves patients away from hospital emergency rooms for non-emergency conditions and allows advanced birth centers to provide C-section deliveries in low-risk pregnancies. Staying on politics, opponents of online sports betting in Florida lost their latest fight against the Seminole Tribe Agreement with the state that permits the gambling. The Florida Supreme Court ruled opponents filed the wrong type of petition to challenge the compact between the Seminole Tribe and the governor's administration. The decision likely means further delays in the legal drama over sports betting in the state. The deal could rake in hundreds of millions of dollars for both the tribe and state government. The Florida Supreme Court did not rule on the merits of the argument. Well, it's day two of the NCAA men's basketball tournament. March Madness is already living up to its name. Last night's biggest bracket buster happened in Pittsburgh. The number three-seeded Kentucky Wildcats losing to the 14-seeded Oakland Golden Grizzlies. Happening tonight, if you gamble on your brackets that didn't work out, well, you still have a chance to win big because the massive Mega Millions jackpot, it's still up for grabs. The grand prize is expected to be worth almost a billion dollars. 977 million to be exact. That would be the game's sixth largest jackpot. According to the lottery, the odds of winning the Mega Millions jackpot are one in 302 million, but it was a chance. That's CBS News Miami's Quick Cast. I'm Jim Barry. Stay tuned for more news right here on CBS Miami.